Uh, if there are any problems, if it wasn't able to uh, put the data up there, then uh, if you click the more details uh, 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 checkbox, then it will tell you what the problems are. And if I did this in SharePoint uh, 2007, there would have been a few issues. Uh, but uh, 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 in most cases, uh, uh, in SharePoint 2010, you won't get uh, many issues at all. In some, most of the issues were like uh, um, referential uh, integrity, that you've got some logic there that says, right, if you delete this, you should really delete all these things. But of course, those rules have now been translated up into SharePoint, and we'll have a look at that. It's also taking a backup of your database, just in case you, you know, something's happened and you want to go back to it with the data in that uh, database. So let's open up that site in the browser. go to the Evo site and you might say well where are they where are those lists okay I can't see them well when it creates those lists the default setting is do not display this list on the quick launch bar okay so again when you do your first export perhaps you're going to have to do some things to tidy it up uh, uh, so the users can see that so to see all the lists I'm going to click the list uh, tie, uh, group heading on the quick launch bar and there we can see the uh, uh, ones that I've just created look two minutes ago all right so I wasn't faking it okay uh, this is the exact list that I've created so uh, what have I got open in access at the moment uh, so let's close that down and let's change one of the employees for example so I'm going to change the uh, let's change the employee name on uh, the website. So I'm going to ed edit uh, this item. So I'm going to save. I'm going to go back into access. So I just uh, close it and open it. Right, and the change is there. I haven't had to do anything. I haven't hit, had to hit, hit refresh or whatever. Uh, that data is, is down there. Uh, if I change uh, something, so if I change something up here again, so uh, let me... Uh, I come back here and I uh, save it. Uh, there you can see I'm editing this uh, column uh, because we've got the little pencil mark in the column to the left. So I'm editing it. I'm just going to hit return and then put my cursor on the next line, which means it will try and write it back to SharePoint. And up it comes immediately. All right. And saying there's a, a conflict there. Uh, what do you want to do? Now, in previously, uh, it didn't notice that there was a conflict there until you hit the save button. But immediately now it knows that the data up there is something different and it's been saved in that database. So do you want to save this one over the top of that one? Uh, or do you want to discard, drop the changes? Or do you want to copy them temporarily into the clipboard? Okay, so you've got three options there. So I'm going to save my record. So now if I go back up to the browser and do a refresh, right, we can see that the data is now on SharePoint. Uh, if I delete a row here, all right, okay, so we've got referential integrity here, so I cannot delete this employee, right? Even though I've moved it up there, it's talked to the server and it said, right, uh, we've got to referential integrity set onto that uh, list or library. Now, this is new in SharePoint uh, 2010. So if we go to list settings, and then we go to, 
sorry. So if we go to opportunities, we go to list, list settings, you'll notice here we've got a number of lookup tables. Uh, so I'm getting information from the customer list. That's all been translated up there because those were, there were those relationships in access. It's made a guess as to the correct type of column that it should create in SharePoint. Okay? So they're not all single line of text or anything like that. It's taken the data type from Access and it's created the SharePoint uh, column type. Where it was getting data from one list, right? it's turned it into a lookup list. So we've got some lookup columns there. And if we look at one of these lookup columns, then uh, down the bottom, as I say, this is new for SharePoint 2010, we're actually saying enforce the relationship, right? Restrict delete, right? So you cannot delete an opportunity row, right, if the customer uh, still exists. Okay. So we can do it uh, there. And also if we delete an opportunity, if we chose cascade delete, we could then say, right, uh, please delete all the customers associated with this opportunity automatically for us. But again, all those settings have been translated for us on our access database. If you don't like them, then you might have to do them afterwards. The data is being managed now by SharePoint. Okay. Yeah, so let's do that then. So let's add another column. So let's go back to list settings and I'm going to add another column here. Uh, so uh, what shall we call this column? Um, opportunity. Um, 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 I'll just call it another column. <laughs> Choices there, that'll be fine. Okay. So uh, now, if I go back to the opportunities, we should see that we've got another column added uh, to the end here. Another column, yes. Uh, so now let's go into access. So that was on the opportunities. What you have to do here is you need to uh, uh, tell it to. Um, uh, refresh the list. And then when I open it, another column is down here. Okay. Now, of course, your reports don't know anything about that column. You're going to have to add that column to the reports that you want to display that data on. Okay. Uh, nothing happens by magic because that's business knowledge, isn't it? You know, SharePoint can't second guess your, your business knowledge. So I think, uh, didn't, I, didn't I delay, it delete something? Did I delete a, a oh yes, that's right, yeah, okay. If I uh, had, to, if I take that off and delete it, then it'll be in the recycle bin and I can bring it back again. Some of the other things new here, uh, so on the create pane, uh, I can also create something called a navigation form. Uh, and this is the bit that looks very much like web, and now what I can do is I can actually bring uh, the other forms that I want to appear on this tab experience. And then I could set this navigation form as the default form to open when anybody opens this access database. So I'm going to go back to the backstage options. And... Uh, It's, oh, I haven't saved it yet. It's doing me. I need to save it. Navigation. Go back to the backstage. So at the moment, when you open the database, it's going to open up that form. I want it to open up the navigation form. So that's really easy to create a navigation now. Okay. Uh, 
and it looks uh, quite nice. And again, you could apply themes and whatever uh, to your uh, um, uh, database. So let's go back to the slides. So the next thing we're going to do is, I'm getting the next demo, I'm going to show you how to use the BDC uh, model file to display information from an external system. And I'm also going to look at access services. So how do you publish an access database into your a SharePoint uh, installation? Now, when you do publish an access application into a web application, this is what you're going to create, then every si the access, when you're publishing the access database, that access database becomes a new site. Okay? What I was doing before, I was just creating lists within a current site. When you're doing this publishing up to access web services, then the whole access database becomes a brand new site. All the access tables become lists within that brand new site. Uh, all your forms get translated into ASPX pages okay, for you. Uh, uh, all your reports get translated into reporting services uh, uh, data language. Uh, so you need this, this bit, uh, the access services is a functionality of SharePoint server. This is not a functionality of SharePoint foundation. Uh, so everything I was showing you up till now, you could do just using SharePoint Foundation. Uh, this bit, uh, you need SharePoint Server for it. And you need to make sure that your administrators have got an access service running, have installed reporting services, uh, or, or it won't work. Okay. If you've created any uh, macros, then they will get translated into JavaScript macros, uh, JavaScript. Uh, and so what Microsoft are saying that if you are planning to do this tr um, publishing to a share access service, then try to use macros and not VB, okay? Because otherwise you're going to have to work out how to translate the VB logic into web technology uh, language. So try to keep to the macros. There is a lot more macros there uh, than before. If you've got any data macros, ma macros that uh, uh, manipulate the data, instead of just presenting information on the user interface, then those macros will get translated into SharePoint workflows. So this is all happening for you underneath the covers. So here are the user interface macros that are supported so that you can publish your web, uh, your access database onto the uh, access web services. So there is a lot more macros, there's a few more macros than these ones, but again, if you're building your access application, if you try to keep to these user interface ones, then there's a one-to-one -one relationship between these macros and a JavaScript equivalent out of the box. Okay. Um, now, of course, every single Microsoft product is ex extensible. So if you need something extra, then uh, your, uh, your developers could perhaps uh, extend it. But there's a load there. There's a load there. So let's have a look. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you the BDC connectivity. So I've got a website here. And after uh, yesterday, I won't go uh, through creating the uh, BDC model. So I've got the external content type. So this here is defining how to connect up to a back-end system, how to connect up to an external system. This happens to be on an SQL server, so it's a particular table I'm pulling off of a database on an SQL server. And uh, what I want to do is I want to export that particular definition file. Okay? I'm not using it. Uh, well, I can use it to display information within SharePoint, but I'm going to use it to display information within Access. So I need to export this application uh, model. Now, the little orange uh, dot is because this is not an RTM version. You know, an RTM version will have a nice little icon there with the orange dot. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to export the application file. 
Now, uh, so I'm going to give it a new name. You, you can see they've got confusions over the name, so whether that will change. Uh, when I right button click it, it said application file, and yet here the dialog box says uh, BDC model. Okay. It's the same thing, different names. Uh, so I'm going to call this access. Now, the default one is uh, telling SharePoint Designer, export it out into an XML format so SharePoint can understand it. But we're not going to use this file for SharePoint. We're going to use it for one of the Office applications. Okay? So you do the same sort of thing if you wanted to expose the information in Outlook. So I don't want default. I want client. Okay, I'm going to click OK. Where am I going to store it? I'll store it in my uh, documents. Uh, so there it is there. So I'm going to save it. So let's go and open up Access. So let's start with a brand new blank uh, database this time. Okay. Uh, I can connect up uh, to a list perhaps on SharePoint. So I can say uh, import a link to a SharePoint list. I don't want to bring the, all the data into this database. I just want a link to it. So here are all the lists on a SharePoint uh, 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 website. So I'm going to connect up to purchase orders. Okay. So now I can see all the information there. Some information about uh, uh, different uh, purchase orders. Very simple list. Now, what I want to do is display the data, not from a SharePoint site, from that SQL database. So I need to make use of that BDC model file. So uh, I need to uh, import again, uh, and uh, it, it, they call it uh, uh, um, data services, or you could uh, use the XML, either one. So I'm going to pick my uh, uh, XML file. Now this uh, particular file could have uh, details of a number of tables in that database. Right? So when you define that uh, within SharePoint Designer, you could say, right, it's this database, that database, or whatever, uh, this uh, table. So I've got to pick what data I want to display in uh, Access. So it's uh, this information here. And it's telling me the fields that are going to be coming over. So I'm going to create a linked table. So I can now, if I want to, I can create a report. Oh, right, let's, let's create a query first. Simple query wizard. So I want to bring over uh, the customer ID. No, I don't. I want to bring over the title from here and the, from the customer. I want to bring the customer ID, the name, and the phone number. Ah, I should create a relationship first. Sorry. So I can say that the customer ID in this uh, uh, table is linked to the customer ID in the other table. So one of them's on SharePoint, one of them's in that database. Now I can create my uh, uh, report. to uh, bring over the title and from the customer ID I'll bring over the uh, company name, uh, the ID and perhaps the phone number. Okay. 
so uh, I can do the same sort of things as before. I can do conditional formatting, I do group by or, or whatever from those two different data sources. So let's uh, close that database. Now, well, what Microsoft provides you is with a number of templates uh, that are web application aware. So templates that suit being published up to the uh, uh, access web services. So if we have a look at the sample ones here, uh, we can see here we've got web database. So these are the ones to look for, the ones that say web database. Again, uh, I can choose a blank one, uh, or I can choose one uh, that's already got some reports and some tables already created for me. I can also do it the other way around. On my SharePoint site, when I create a new site, we can see here we've got some web databases. So uh, that way round, we've only got one template, one site definition that's suited to creating a access web uh, 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 application, which you can then open and amend using access. I've already created one uh, to save time. We're running out. Um, So this is what it would look like up on your web browser. Uh, your, uh, so uh, those uh, web templates will have navigation, and those navigations end up lo looking like that if that's what you've set as your, the one that should be open. Underneath the covers, as I say, we've got some lists and libraries. So we can have a look at all the lists and libraries, the forms, the reports, that's all created there. And when we click on them, it'll open access and we can amend them if we wanted to, if we weren't displaying them as XML files. Okay. So that finishes the demo. So, yes, access is a, a wonderful product. Many people thought it was going to die. Right? It is not going to die. It's just got better and better. Access 2007 was really good, uh, and it integrated really well with uh, SharePoint uh, 2007. Access 2010 has got even better. Okay. Uh, so, yes, it answers many questions that the IT department wants. They don't want people to have their little bits of data onto their desktop. Uh, it's faster now. Uh, it's secure. That little uh, database is secure where, where it's... Uh, caches the data, uh, and because if you're going to put the uh, uh, information on SharePoint, you can make use of all the uh, functionality on SharePoint, including throttling uh, of the amount of data that's going to be displayed on your web pages. It's easy to use. Uh, you don't have to be a real techie to use Access now. Again, it, it got this name about it that you had to really know uh, SQL command strings and VB uh, and building macros. As you can see, nothing I did, it was all click, right? And I purposefully did that uh, to show you how easy it has become. So, thank you very much for attending. More information uh, about Access you can uh, find on the Access, Microsoft's Access team blog, and they've got a load of uh, uh, data there. In fact, when you create one of those web databases, uh, it comes up on the uh, page, the uh, help page, there's a tab that they've put with a little video. And if you connect it up to the internet, then you can play that video and it will tell you more about the uh, uh, web uh, databases and the capabilities that you've got. There's also a number of webcasts available on the internet. Uh, that you can find more about access services. There's a podcast. And if you want to know more about BCS, uh, how to connect up to external systems both within SharePoint or in any of the Office clients, uh, then there is a, a Microsoft BCS team now. Right? And they've got their own blog. And there's, they're really pushing it. Uh, there's loads and loads of videos about that. Uh, so if you want to learn more about that as well.
So that's it uh, for today. Uh, so that's uh, 11 o'clock. So thank you very much for attending. And if you've got any questions, if you'd like to come up afterwards or Twitter uh, the question on the, uh, 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 as a Twitter, as a tweet. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>